Is Jesus just a really great guy, or is he God? Welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Today we have Mike Stevens, and I appreciate you coming and sharing Thanks. your story. Thanks, Earl. It's so fascinating. I hope we get it all in here. It's just a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, I, I could talk <laughs> for a while. Where, where are you from? Where are you born, and what's was, your background? I was born in uh, Provo. Okay. Um, and I moved up when I was about four to Layton, Utah. Okay. And now I live in Kaysville, Utah. So you've been in this area mm -hmm. all of your life, huh? Yeah, pretty much. All of your young life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and your parents, were they members of the church? They were. They went were they? to BYU. Okay. And, and, uh, so deep you know, roots there yeah. in Mormonism. And deep, deep So you roots. were active, I guess. And Yeah, I was. 12, or you got baptized at age 8, I guess. Mm, baptized at 8. Um, Got the ironic priesthood when, 12, when I was supposed yeah. to, 12, 14, sure. 16. <laughs> Um, seminary. Did you? Yeah. Um, any questions ever come up in your youth or anything about the church that kind of... Not not really in, in my youth. I kind of towed the line yeah. really well. I wanted to be the best that I could be, <laughs> yeah. you know, so... You know, and we were, we're just raised that way, aren't we? I mean, yeah. we just, and we go to church and we just kind of believe everything and we kind of get indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the way to say it. And did you sense that too? That you just you had a testimony, I guess, and I did read, um, read the Book of Mormon, that kind of I stuff. I read the Book of Mormon a lot, um, yeah. but I did have a rebellious streak in me a oh, little you did? bit. Um, at, at sixteen, I decided uh, that I was going to start drinking coffee. Oh, you did? Um, because all my friends were uh, either going out and getting drunk or doing some oh. of the other things. Well, coffee was on the same list. As alcohol. Uh, as alcohol, so I thought that was just as bad, so I... Pretty rebellious there. Yeah, I was, I was pretty rebellious. <laughs> so did that last very long, or was I just oh, a... Yeah, it was kind of a whole life. I've always liked coffee. Oh, so. <laughs> interesting. Um, I stopped, you know, between the missionary and <laughs> forward until later, yeah. but... So, w w was it at 19 that you went on your mission? At 19. Yeah, um, okay. And where did you go? I went to the Louisiana Baton Rouge okay. mission. So yeah. um, now you and, went through the temple first, I yeah, guess. Went through the temple. Uh -huh. How was that experience for you? Well, that that was a, an interesting experience. I there were points in the temple that I um, I really didn't like, <laughs> just didn't like. But I had been told that that was the place, the happiest place I should be. So, and I was kind of having this struggle in my mind, like, uh, the, what, what was this? And uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be happy about it type feeling. And uh, my parents asked me that, and, and I, I just couldn't answer them. I was like, um, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you almost have to. Yeah, yeah, I almost have to say that. And yeah. you figure you'll just get used to it or learn, yeah. learn what it's all about. Yeah. Now, you don't go in, you didn't go to the temple during your mission, did you? I did. Um, Where did you go? Um, in Louisiana. So um, just before my mission, just a, like a year before my mission, they started building those uh, mini temples all okay. around. And uh, Louisiana got one. Okay. Um, right a year before my mission. So I was able to go three times. On my As a mission group, they go and mm -hmm. all the missionaries. Well, you go could and... kind of request it, and then they would oh. give you time. So to request did it get it. any better for you? No, when you went the three no. times. <laughs> um, no, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. I just waited till the last part of it, and was like, <laughs> okay, made it through. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. Uh, <laughs> so the mission was really had a lot of impact mm -hmm. in your life, and and has had an impact in your journey. So tell us a couple of things that happened. And, and, uh... Well, um, first off, I wanted to say a lot of people ask me, um, how do you feel about your mission? And I, I tell them I loved my mission yeah. um, because of the things that I was taught on my mission that helped me in the future. Um, so on my mission, I had a few experiences with, uh, with certain people, and then there was a big church out there that would minister to Mormons. And, uh, 
and so they would come out and kind of hit on a few a few subjects here and there, kind of planting seeds. Were, were um, you just the two of you walking along and they'd come over and visit, or was it when you went to doors? Or yeah, both? so it was both. <laughs> you know, they would come, talk to us, um, and then uh, there would be other times where we would be tracking and knocking on doors, and as we would go down and go into someone's house and come out, they would go into that same house and teach them the gospel and then leave. Um, so they would they would follow us around and wow. clear up misconceptions after what, what we left. What did you start hearing? Um, so was... there there were different things uh, coming out uh, between masonry um, and the temple and um, some other things. But the, one of the biggest things for me was the rock in the hat. They kept talking oh. about this rock in the hat that Joseph Smith used to translate the Book of Mormon. And uh, what I had been taught was that he had, you know, translated it with him, with had it, the plates in, there, with and, it in front of him, right. and and that's how he did it. Yeah. And uh, um, this was a huge impact in my life because at this time, um, uh, President Hinckley came to my mission, and in in that um, also Elder Holland came, um, and some other uh, big name people in the church really? came Other and they, authorities, huh? yeah and they uh, invited about 20 of us missionaries in a room was this just to combat this church's efforts or do you think they were trying to I honestly do, don't know but did um, they do this elsewhere i wonder or anyway. yeah i okay. i you know i'm not sure um, well, that must have been but it, this was though. a this was a, a great seed that was planted but you know, as missionaries, we're thinking, this is great. We get yeah. to talk to the prophet of the church and ask him questions openly in this closed room. And they were encouraging and, you to do that. Yeah, they were oh. encouraging us. Okay. And, and, you know, for the most part, missionaries were asking the, the same questions that you would expect them to ask, like, um, you know, have you seen Jesus or, <laughs> or that sort of thing, you know. Um, but I asked, um, because it had been on my heart so hard, I asked, you know, I heard that Joseph Smith um, translated the Book of Mormon with a, a rock and a hat. And with his head in the hat, and looking his at head this in rock. The hat. Yeah. And, and, uh, sear stone or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I described it and he, he looked over the, the crowd of us missionaries, about 20 of us, like I said, and he said, that is absolutely false doctrine. President Hinckley said President that? President Hinckley said that. You cannot believe that. He said a few other things that drove home his point yeah. in it being false doctrine. But, uh, yeah, so he told me it was false doctrine. I'll kind of flash forward to the future, and lo and behold, my surprise when <laughs> they came out with that essay. <laughs> and admitted that yeah. there was a... The rock in the hat, yeah. I guess he knew. Do you think he knows I, or knew or... Uh, you know, they have to I, I have I have to believe that they know this stuff because they had it. They had yeah, it. Still, yeah, they yeah. have them in their vaults or yeah, something. Yeah, they had it. And I'm they sure the it. president of the church sees those and mm -hmm. are aware of them. Yeah. And then, of course, the Internet comes out and does more stuff, and so he has mm -hmm. to admit, or the church has to admit. That, kind of bring forward the stuff that people well, are talking about. That must have been huge for, for you. It, it was huge. Um, at that point in my faith crisis i had started chopping off the presence of the church meaning okay that one <laughs> that one's not right and that one's not right like brigham and, young. And, yeah brigham it. young okay psh, okay <laughs> chop him out you know and and at that point i was holding on to joseph smith and that was it i was just holding on to that one thing and then the rock and the hat came out and it just psh, <laughs> tumbled <laughs> oh my goodness so how late was this in your mission i mean did you have much time left or um i had a year left did it impact mission. your testimony um yeah it made At it stronger because i just had the the prophet tell me it was false so i was like oh no, it's of false. course yeah you didn't know otherwise at yeah. that point okay yeah, it's false so my my vigor towards the mission and, and following that was oh, okay I was gotcha. just made stronger by yeah. by that at that point yeah. um but I, you know i didn't know that god was working <laughs> and putting these things on my shelf had you so. did, just to ask did you hear anything about grace did you know anything about grace and uh works as they as tried a missionary um a lot of people tried to bring that up 
Um, but I think that's a really tough thing. Um, a tough, I'm trying to think of the word. Concept. But concept yeah. for a Christian that's outside of Mormonism to try to talk about works and faith and grace um, to someone that is just not even grasping what they're saying. They're saying the same words. But Especially to not, a missionary who's yeah. 100% involved yeah. In, yeah. in ministry, so, so to speak. Or. So I do remember those conversations, and I remember a lot of... I had, I actually had a pastor uh, chase me down the street before as we were walking, <laughs> chased us with the Bible to, to talk <laughs> to us. Try to us. show you the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, try to talk to us and teach us the truth. Um, so Yeah, this was the Bible Belt, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, it was, in, it was in the Bible Belt. There was a lot of uh, Christians there. So, Anything else on your mission that you wanted to mention? No, I, I think that That's, those were the big pivotal points yeah. uh, for me. One mission. thing I do ask some missionary or, you know, some of you, the people I interview is, did you feel like you were preaching Jesus or were you preaching the church? Um, I was preaching the church. Yeah. Um, it, if you were to ask me then, I would have said Jesus. Um, really? But now, today, I would say the church. Oh, you felt on your mission that you were... Yeah, because it was the Church of Jesus Christ well, sure. as His name, so yeah. I would have I would have done some gymnastics into that. <laughs> and got into yeah, that. <laughs> got into it, but okay. Yeah. Anyway, you come home, and what happens in life? Well, I I kind of toe the line once again. I get married kind of really quick, um, out of the gate, which turned out to in the temple. Yeah, in the temple. Yeah. Um, we got married outside the temple first, oh. um, and then. We got married in the temple later, okay. um, so um, like a year later, the yeah. year yeah. thing. And then um, I held various callings to the church, elders quorum secretary, elders quorum president, oh, yeah. um, just other various callings. Just and had a good testimony. The yeah. church was true, and you're just moving forward. Yeah, moving forward and <laughs> gung ho, you know. And I don't know. One day, I just was tired. What happened? I I just they had I had like three or four callings because no they were just passing on callings to me and it was like I'm just tired. Well, get Mike to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just tired and I just kind of stopped going. Really? Well, yeah, I just kind of stopped. Mm. But I never stopped believing. It was just sure. like I need a break. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I need a break for a, a minute, sabbatical. You know? Yeah, a sabbatical <laughs> from church because this is getting too much. Yeah. You know? yeah. And and how did, did that last very long? Or? Um, it, I, I started that about 27. Thanks. So, okay. Yeah, and, and um, 36 now. So, um, started, that was kind of right where my transition began. Mm -hmm. was, was right there. Well, and, so, well, tell us what happened to, to kind of make you change your mind about things. Um, I was getting mad at certain things the church was doing, um, different political things and that they were kind of taking a stance on that mm -hmm. I didn't feel like a church should, at that point in, in my life, I didn't feel like they should be that hard in political stances and things and just other things. I can't, I can't fully remember what yeah, yeah. took me to that point, but I got to that point and, uh, a few years later I, I got divorced Okay. Um, and it's then always I, impactful. Yeah, it is. Things. It was, and I, I became angry, but I still, oh my God, I was still holding on to Joseph Smith. This was still holding on to Joseph Smith, but I didn't want the missionaries to talk to me, and I, I didn't want home teachers, and I didn't, but really? I was holding on, you know, just holding on to that. And church then, is true, and yeah. Joseph Smith's a prophet. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a prophet. In church, I'm questioning, but <laughs> you know, he's a prophet in there. Yeah. But uh, then the rock and the hat happened, and that I was about I was like 32. And how did that happen? Did you just read about it, or uh, the essay there? came out from the church? Oh, the essay. Yeah. Where they well, admitted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they show a picture of, I believe it was uh, President Nelson now, yeah. um, looking at the rock in the hat, and he had this angry face. And <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the picture they showed. Yeah. You saw. And that kind of mm -hmm. took care of the, the hanging on to Joseph Smith. Yeah, I part. just took that, and it just swept the legs right out for me. Where were you at religiously at this point when you felt, okay, the church isn't true, but 
You, did you question God or oh, question? Yeah. I, I threw, um, the common phrase, I threw the baby out with the bathwater. I just, oh, no God. You know, just went full-blown atheist. Did you really? Full-blown. Yeah. Didn't didn't believe there was a God. Oh, God. And I just threw everything out of the window. Well, we've said it here before, but it just seems like our, our relationship with the church as a Mormon is so strong, but there's we don't have Jesus with us really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't, and so when we leave or find out the only true church isn't true, we don't, we don't really have Jesus to take with us or something. I don't know. I, I think the other problem is is that the Mormons have taken the stance of I'm Christian. Um, so when someone like me goes to leave, they throw Christianity out of the the, the out with Mormonism oh. because they've. It's in my mind. It was they're linked. Oh, they're linked, and I didn't know the difference. You just chucked the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> chucked it all. Yeah. Oh. So. Okay. How long did that last? And what uh, happened to that, bring you around? That lasted quite a while. I met my new new my wife now, um, and uh, she had been born into the church and LDS baptized. Church. Yeah. Okay. Um, but really had never gone very much further okay. than that. Um, so she is dealing with me going through this faith crisis and being an atheist while still believing in God, you know. Oh. And, and in her eyes, she believed in the Trinity, not the God of Mormonism. Right. So, okay. um, so she's like, well, we're going to be Christians, you know. <laughs> so uh, we're going to pick a church now. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you can believe what you want, but you're going. And this is what we're going to teach our family. And okay. Like, yeah. oh, all right. All right. You know. You went along with that. Huh? Yeah. I'll be equally yoked. You know. That was my thought. I'll just. Okay. You know. And I went and I liked it. Where did it. you go? Alpine. Oh, you started in, at Alpine. In Layton. Yeah. And what did you think of that the first time you went to a it was, Christian you know, church? I had kind of been warned by someone like that. Um, they have a live band. Yeah. You know. Um, so. The music. It's, and... it's not going to be the same as what you're you're used to. So yeah. just be prepared. So I walk in, of course, there's a live band and, you know. And words up on the. Words up on the yeah. thing. And Did you sense, though, that it was full of worshipful or full of yeah, worship? Yeah, the Different one thing, thing. I, I sensed, I came home that day and I was like, I just, you know, I, I have a hard time believing what they're saying because I'm, a, you know, atheist at this point. But like, I have a hard time believing it, but. Man, I feel great after that. Let's do it every week, you know. It's kind really? of like a motivational speech. <laughs> and like, I feel good. Let's yeah. uh, continue. So awesome. we continued, and I participated in church services, like kids' church and helping out. And yeah. All while not believing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I one day was like, you know what? I got to figure this out. Um, and this is where I my conversion my what conversion happened? comes in so i uh went to church one day and i asked one of the pastors i said hey i'm a former mormon i i got duped by this guy that's 200 years old how can i trust this guy that's 2000 years old and he's what like what a good question yeah he's like you need to go talk to this person um, and then about a month later, I asked another pastor at my church the same question. He's like, and he pointed me back to that person. That same person. The, the same first person, one. you know. <laughs> and, and then I talked to another pastor, and this time it was the the head pastor of of the church, and he said, I need to talk to that person. And uh, I, I was like, well, okay, I'll wait for him to come around because uh, our, our church does like a teaching pastor rotation. Right. So I was like, oh, I'll wait, and wait for him to uh, come around and then ask him. And one day he just came up to me out of nowhere and was like, I need to talk to you. And when I was thinking at that point was, hey, all these other pastors sent you. sent you. And he told me later he was just praying and God led him to me. And who was that? It, it was Ross Anderson. It was Ross. Okay. Yeah. Well, we Ross love Anderson. Ross. Yeah. yeah. It was Ross Anderson. And uh, he immediately started trying to clear up and, and find what my problem was. And he uh, led me to some videos that and, and things that cleared up my misconception of the Bible. Yeah. So I didn't That's trust huge, the Bible. That's huge, isn't it? Yeah. 
Well, we don't. It's only trans. It hasn't been translated correctly. And yeah, the the uh, article of faith. You know, I mean, we talk about throwing it. stuff out. I mean, we never had the Bible to tr to begin with, so right. it's just, easy to chuck that. Yeah, yeah. You know, psh, chuck that out the window. You know. So, so did you start really seeing stuff in the mm -hmm. Bible that you could count on? Or trust I did, or? and uh, you know, first I I, um, I kind of want to point out just two um, two things real quick. First is uh, I wanted to move out of Utah mm -hmm. because I didn't want my family to grow up in a, a, a culture. this culture. Yeah. I wanted to move away. So that's the first point I kind of just want to um, leave on the table for a second. And then the second point is um, I'm going to share my, my story, um, but I was always hesitant to stare, uh, share my story because in Mormonism you're taught to hold those things in. They're sacred. You you uh, hold them there and uh, and uh, so I thought about it and I was like no that's that's glorifying God by t by showing yeah. the, the story the so sure, yeah. mm -hmm. so what I did was I, I finally could trust the Bible so I opened it up and I was reading in uh, Matthew and and seeing how how um, how there was the prophecy of him doing a certain thing and then where he fulfilled the prophecy. So then I started trusting Jesus. I could trust it. And uh, I hit Matthew 5, which was the Beatitudes. Yeah. And I was reading and I realized at that moment that I was poor and I was crushed down and I was at my lowest point in life that I could be. I was just this little thing. Yeah. And that's when God spoke to me not in a I like know. an audio audio audible voice yeah. but i knew what he was saying and at that moment he was telling me that you know i've trusted in him i'm saved and uh and that i'm supposed to be here in utah to minister to mormons, mormons. so that's why i left that on the table for, <laughs> for a second is because I wanted to get away. I wanted to leave. And God and, wanted you and here. And he said, nope, you're staying. And so, now you actually are teaching. Yeah, I am former teaching. Former Mormons or uh -huh. Mormons who are questioning. And yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so I have... Uh, With Ross Anderson. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's he, neat. Um, and now he's kind of taken a step back from it. Yeah. Um, he's more of an overseer right. of what's going on. But. Well, so do you... Figure that you feel like that was your born again moment. Oh right? yeah, that was my born again moment. Yeah. I, you know, at that point, and it was funny. I ran upstairs. My wife was sleeping. I was outside when I read my Bible, so I kind of looked up at that summer sky, <laughs> you know, and that and kind of happened. And I ran inside, and I woke my wife up. I said, "I think I've been saved." <laughs> That's <laughs> so, so fantastic. She's like, what? You know, but I was like, "Don't you sense the freedom and?" Um, then, well, just the freedom of having that knowledge. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, you, you just show, your shoulders are less burdened. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It yeah. is. Well, what did you now? Now, how did you feel? How do you feel about grace and works? Now you well, understand that a little differently. Oh yeah, I totally understand it differently. It's gone from a from a I need to do certain things to gain God's favor. Um, I, I remember when I first came to faith, I would catch myself praying and I'd say, if I did, and I was like, oh, wait, wait, that's wrong, and not if, you know, but it became a, I trust in him, so I'm turning away from my bad sin and trying to follow him. Yeah. So I, I realized that it was a present from God. A gift. And, yeah. yeah, a gift, and <clears throat> uh, now I'm, he's changed my heart. So I can go and, and tell others. I just never understood that it was Christ's righteousness that saves us. You know, yeah. that he's the one that's righteous, not me. I never will be and never could be. But because of what he did and his righteousness, I'm saved. Yeah, it's great. It's, it is. It's such good news. And, and it's not so that we can go out and sin. and. Right. It's not a free and, pass. No, it's know, not it's, a free pass. But yeah. it's... And, and we even feel great responsibility, like you say, to, mm -hmm. to share this good news with others. Yeah, and, and I've noticed that um, in my heart as I've accepted him, that I've turned, that I've 
it's just become easier to to pull away from my sin. Yeah. Now I'm not saying I'm perfect. No. no I'm a no, sinner. No, sorry, you know. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sinner, and and that's why I need Jesus. But it's great that He has. Um, you know, turned me into his direction, not my own. Well, and I started out by saying, is Jesus a really great guy yeah. or is he God? And in Mormonism, he really is no more, I mean, he's special because he was first born, mm -hmm. but he's just one of us. Yeah. He's our brother in Mormonism, right? Yeah. And he just is our elder brother and he's just, he kind of did something that we, you know, but uh, we take advantage of that, I guess, and stuff. But he really isn't the focal, the focus. Now it's oh. uh, in Mormonism, it's more about us and what we're doing and how we're climbing the ladder and mm -hmm. going to the temple and the word of wisdom and all the tithing and all those things. Yeah, and yeah, sticking to the set rules of thumb, which, um, you know, won't save you. No. But, um, and now Jesus is. Is everything <laughs> yeah now he's everything he's he's given me everything you yeah, know fantastic I thought I would lose everything coming out of Mormonism yeah um, I thought I thought I would lose a lot but in in reality I've gained everything I've, I've gained it all you know and and I, I can only you know praise praise him for it I'll have to ask you because you mentioned the Beatitudes but I guess the Bible just has taken on a different perspective now than it did. Yeah. <laughs> on your mission, for example. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, the you know, like the Beatitudes just showed me how broken I was. Yeah. You know, and that God um, lifts up broken people. That's what He, he does. You know, yeah. He loves you enough to take you out of your your point of despair and lift you out of it. Have you talked to any of those folks back in Baton Rouge, anybody that you were friends with? That yeah, you... yeah, I've sent a lot of uh, I'm sorry's. Oh, have you really? <laughs> and uh, with uh, the the gospel in there, yeah, you know, the gospel of Christ, like telling them the true gospel. I've Throw got, a few scriptures at them. And... <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I didn't, you know, uh, I sent a few to churches saying, you know, because of you, um, yeah. I'm where I'm at because of some seeds you plant and I'm where I'm at today. Um, got some love there, um, but on the, the side where I had converted a lot of people, they were not very happy with me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, gosh, you know, we're, we're actually out of time almost. Okay. Anything you want to say to your family or friends or somebody that might listen to this and know who you are and what you've kind of shared your journey a little bit and... Well, uh, I guess the, the one thing that I would want to say is um, read the Bible. Learn, learn the actual gospel. Um, we can hit on all sorts of points, but ultimately God's truth is God's truth, and it's in the Bible. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. It's there. And we carry that silly thing. Mm -hmm. I carried it for 65 years to yeah. church. Never understood it. And yeah. those scriptures that popped up all of a sudden yeah. are just uh, just fantastic. Right. Yeah. Well, Mike, thanks so much for sharing and appreciate it. Thanks you're, for having you're me. You're a good kid. Yeah. <laughs> good luck to you and thanks. Thanks. We'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.